Nurgle's campaign gameplay is unique in so many ways. It can feel slow due to their system of growth and settlement developments, but in reality, they can potentially gain access to higher tier buildings and units as fast or faster than most other factions. They also feel difficult to make money with outside of quests, since passive income is hard to come by and unreliable when you get your hands on it. But nevertheless, they also have a very full chest of tools to use to dominate the campaign map. Let's first go over the pros and cons of their campaign gameplay. First of all the pros, the plagues allow you to constantly spread different effects of all kinds throughout the map to assist you in basically everything and slow down everyone else. The cyclical buildings allow you to get a hold of late game units very early if you build your provinces correctly. And the instant recruitment can allow you to go from nothing to a full stack in an instant provided you have the coins to support this. As for the cons, their economy as I mentioned is one of the weak ones I've played so far. None of their buildings earn them a ton of money and they have no commandments to augment this. When combined with their lack of trade, it leaves you with raiding and sacking to scrounge together a bit of coin. Their unique settlement development also does not allow you to build garrisons to defend yourself from invaders, and it comes down to which infrastructure buildings you have and which part of their cycle they are in, as they will provide the garrison units. And the instant recruitment does not give you full HP units, so you end up spending a lot of time sat around if you aren't in the best place for replenishments. So far Nurgle only has one faction playable in the game, and they are the pox makers of Nurgle. They are led by Kugaf the Plague Father, and for their faction effects they are granted 10 growth, a minus 35% recruitment cost, and plus 40% recruitment health for Nurgling units. Kugaf's Lord effects grant minus 50% to infection cost for all plagues on him, plus 2 to Nurgle corruption, and plus 15% chance of plague spreading. His faction starts in the sunken sewers in the middle top part of the map. His starting units are 3 plague bearers, 3 Nurglings, some plague toads, chaos furies of Nurgle, and plague drones with death's heads. Their climate preferences, they have Frozen, Wasteland, Chaotic Wasteland, Temperate, Temperate Island and Savannah being suitable, Magical Forest, Mountains and Jungle being unpleasant, and Ocean and Desert being uninhabitable. For their expansion options, the starting war will lead you to the east to complete your starting province. After this you can continue east to the north to pick up the Road of Skulls, and then you can choose to go further east into Ogre Lands, though these are mountains so they aren't the most habitable. You can also head south to take on some Greenskins and the inevitable Kislev, who will be making their way up by now. Alternatively, you could cross the sea at Darko Wharf and take on the Norsecan coastline, which again, is probably Kislev ridden by now. Now Nurgle has a lot of faction mechanics. First up, they of course have the Chaos Tax. Since they are a Chaos faction, they automatically declare war on any non-Chaos or Chaos worshipping factions. Their first real mechanic is the Plagues. Now of course Nurgle loves to spread a good plague throughout the world, so his factions are able to create them from scratch with all sorts of symptoms and effects. You start by choosing one of five bases. Pox, Bubos, Agu, Rot or Palsy. After this you can choose up to two other symptoms to add and there are currently 25 to choose from. Now I'm of course not going to read out all of them, but they are basically buffs to everything you do and nerfs to everything anyone non-Nurgle does. You can unlock symptoms via research and spreading the different kinds of plague, so I'd encourage you to be using these as much as possible to spread the love worldwide. There are also 5 unique recipes that grant bonus effects if they are followed, so they are definitely worth using once you can. Once you've crafted your perfect plague, you now need to choose how to spread it. You can deploy it directly on an army or settlement and then spread it from there. Alternatively, you can create a plague cultist who can be used to spread directly to a settlement or army after which they will be destroyed. Doing all of this costs infections and the more symptoms you use, the more expensive it becomes. You can gain infections via post battle captives, cults, looting, sacking and raising settlements and spreading certain types of plagues. Once you get into the late game, you won't really need to worry about them, but early on, you are going to want to choose your expenditure very carefully to make the most of them. As mentioned earlier, Nurgle's buildings are cyclical. This means nearly all buildings in the faction work on a cycle. They have multiple stages, with each one having different effects. Every building at each cycle will net you a small amount of income. Emphasis on small, you are not going to be rolling in coin as this faction. The military buildings will add units to the recruitment pool, and the later stages of the cycle will add higher tier units. Infrastructure buildings add nurglings to the recruitment pool, along with various amounts of growth, control and corruption. You can reduce the duration of each stage with things such as commandments, other buildings and technologies. And like most factions, Nurgle recruits units instantly, so you simply select what you want and summon them in the same turn. You can also summon any units you want from any settlement, so you don't need to have all the recruitment buildings in every single province to build armies wherever you want. This basically gives them global recruitment at the cost of local recruitment, no matter where you are, which is pretty good. To balance this, units summoned are not at full HP, and will require replenishment to get there. This means you won't spend as much time sat around recruiting or moving around to find the correct recruitment zone, 
but you will spend a lot of time garrisoned or encamped to get your army to full strength before sending it out. Nurgle also has slightly different growth to most factions. Aside from a single infrastructure building, you can only increase growth in a region by increasing Nurgle corruption. Reaching a high level of corruption increases growth by up to 15 per turn. This means that your settlements grow much slower than other factions, but your buildings do go through their most elite cycles, even if they're in a size 1 settlement, so it balances out. Of course, some buildings can only reach their highest tiers when in provincial capitals, but that's not exactly anything new. As with all the four Chaos factions, Nurgle has access to unholy manifestations. As you spread more Nurgle corruption around the world, you unlock four abilities. Pestilent growth is unlocked from the start and can be used on an army to increase replenishment by 20% for two turns whilst disabling campaign move range. This can be very useful when recruiting a new army to get them to full HP quickly and out into the world. The Blessing of Nurgle requires 1000 corruption worldwide and increases the chances of plague spreading locally by 30% for three turns whilst disabling campaign movement. If you've taken a settlement deep in the enemy lands and they are all around you, then this one can come in clutch to spread a plague as quickly as possible. Exponential Growth requires 2000 corruption and grants 300 growth and minus 20% recruitment cost in a region for three turns. Of course this one is great when you're in a province you want to grow quickly or you want to build an army on the cheap. And finally, Nurgle's Visitation requires 3,000 corruption worldwide and grants a random plague to every settlement and army in a province at the cost of disabling campaign move range for the target army for three turns. Of course, you want to use this one on an army that is buried deep in an enemy-owned area to make the most of all those plagues. Speaking of corruption, the great game is the competition between the four branches of chaos to spread their corruption throughout the world. Whichever faction has the most gains bonuses every five turns. When Nurgle is in ascendancy, they gain massive buffs to their unholy manifestations. Pestilent Grove remains unchanged, but Blessing of Nurgle now increases the plague spreading chance by 100%. Exponential Growth now grants 350 growth and minus 50% recruitment cost, and Nurgle's Visitation now only takes two turns rather than three. And their final mechanic is the cults. Once you've spread enough corruption to a region, there is a chance that a cult will form, which is kind of like an Undercity, but only with one slot. You can build one of four buildings in these cults. Shelters, which gain five infections per turn. Refuges, which gain 10 infections per turn whenever growth is more than 200 in the region. Hospices, which gain 10 infections per turn whenever a Lord is present. And colonies, which destroy the cult upon completion and infect the host settlement with a random plague. They may not be extremely powerful, but the passive infections will certainly help out a lot, and spreading plagues into enemy lands really does never get old. Coming to the Lord's skills now, we first up, of course, have the legendary Lord of the faction, Kugath Plaguefather. He has a pretty standard blue tree with Root Marcher and buffs for recruitment, looting and raiding, as well as corruption. You can then get to Lightning Strike, upkeep reductions, attrition reductions and increases to replenishment, which are incredibly, incredibly useful when playing as Nurgle with your casualty replenishment and upkeep struggles. And of course, Renowned and Feared has a bunch of very strong buffs. Of course, the red line is totally focused on helping out your units, so I would say to prioritise upgrading skills that will help you in the late game rather than running out of use once you leave the early game. Pick up any spells you want from his Law of Nurgle, and it is a pretty great law and he gets some massive buffs to it, so you're going to want at least a few of these. His Yellow Tree improves his fighting stats, including his powerful ranged attacks and some aura abilities to weaken and damage nearby enemy units. His unique skills along the Angel of Disease line bring him buffs for many things in the faction, and pretty much all of them are worth picking up, aside from buffs for Nurglings, since they fall off a cliff very early on. And the top row, of course, has buffs versus Siege, Dwarfs, and for Missile Resist. The Herald of Nurgle is the only type of non-legendary lord they have so far, and you can choose to recruit them with the Law of Nurgle or the Law of Death. The blue tree is exactly the same as Kugaf's, so you're going to want to pick up the same skills here that you did there. And of course the red line totally focused on helping out units, so build for the late game if you can. You then want to pick up any spells you fancy from your chosen lore, and the yellow line of course has a ton of buffs for the lord themselves in combats, but I wouldn't go into this until a little bit later on. Upon reaching level 13, you can choose from one of the three locust skills and should pick up these as soon as you can. You also have the choice of two mounts, the Nurglin Palanquin or the Rockfly, which we'll cover more in the battle section. And finally, you can pick up buffs for Fighting Siege, some Missile Resist and Immortality. As with all Heralds of Chaos, upon reaching level 15 and starting a new turn, you are presented with the choice to evolve them into Exalted Demons. The Herald of Nurgle changes into the Exalted Great Unclean one of Nurgle, and of course keeps whatever lore of magic you first picked when you recruited them. They are basically the same skill tree as Heralds, aside from a couple of small differences. Some different abilities in the yellow line, no locust talents, and no mounts. Coming to the heroes now, we have the cultists of Nurgle. On the campaign map, they can damage walls, wound enemy characters, hinder replenishment, spread corruption in the local province, and increase mobility when embedded in an army. 
To be honest, I'm not really sure how you'd build these lads, and they seem to be pretty bad at everything they do. On the campaign map, the only thing really worth doing is spreading corruption, but you may as well just send out a plague to do that. If they're going into battle, then you want to increase mobility, then go right to the yellow tree for all kinds of stat buffs, despite their pretty naff base stats. Along the top row, they can pick up a Chaos Steed mount, as well as some summons for Plague Bearers, or a great unclean one, which is pretty good. Then you have Missile Resist, Bonuses vs Siege, and Immortality. Our other hero type is the Plague Ridden. You can recruit them in the Law of Death or the Law of Nurgle. On the campaign map, they can assault units, assassinate enemy characters, assault garrisons, spread control in the local province, and provide training when embedded in an army. Depending on what you want to use them for, you'll pick up some different skills. If you're going to keep them on the campaign map as assassins, then pick up pretty much everything but training. If they're being used in battle, then pick up training for some passive XP, then go into the spell line and pick up anything that you want. Then the yellow tree has some buffs for them in general combat, but I don't think this should be a priority for these lads. And then pick up one of the three locust skills once you can at level 13. Of course, choose from one of their two mounts, which are the same as the lords have, the Nurgling Palankin or the Rotfly. And finally, pick up some buffs for Fighting Siege, Missile Resist and Immortality. We now come to the Commandments. The Plague God's Greenhouse reduces the cycle time by one for all infrastructure buildings. This is useful for when your province is just setting up and growing to get to those later stages of your buildings quicker. The Plague God's Nursery provides four control, minus 20% campaign move range for all enemy armies starting their turn in the region, and minus 5% recruitment cost. Of course, a great one for recruitment and when the enemy is in your lands. The Plague God's Pasture provides plus 50% chance of plague spreading and plus 100% to plague duration. There is a plague in the region, you want to use this to get the most out of it as much as possible. Foster Cults provides three Nurgle Corruption and plus one Nurgle Corruption in adjacent provinces, another great one for new provinces to get them under your control and prepare neighbouring areas for your arrival. The research tree of Nurgle is made up of many small groups of techs that require you to research for techs before moving to the next one. This forces you to pick up at least a couple of techs you would probably normally avoid before moving on to the others. The techs scale nicely into the late game with buffs to units becoming available around about the time you're likely to unlock them whilst playing. There are also several that unlock plague symptoms, allowing you more powerful effects in the campaign. There are also a lot dedicated to growth, which is something you can struggle with. The techs grant you population surplus upon taking a settlement, meaning you can rush growing it to the max size much, much quicker. And that is everything you need to know about the Nurgle campaign. If you enjoyed this video, then please do consider leaving a like, and of course subscribe to see more videos like this, including the Nurgle Battle Guide coming next Monday. They are one unique faction with truly lot accurate battle gameplay, so you don't want to miss it. Leave any questions you have in the comments below and I'll answer them as best I can. If you'd like to support the channel, then you can become a member here on YouTube, a subscriber on Twitch, or a patron on Patreon. Doing so gets you shout outs on the end screen like Dominic Shamas and of course Adam T, Henry Tucker and XJS for their support at that Unclean Ones tier. I really can't thank you guys enough. One more time, I thank you all so very much for watching and for now, I've been Colonel Damders and I will see you next turn.